Culture Jam, How to Reverse America's Suicidal Consumer Binge and Why We Must. Is that a title or what? From the inside of the book, let me just read one paragraph to give you an idea of the goals that Kala Lassen and his associates have set forth. We call ourselves culture jammers, he says. We're on a loose, we are a loose global network of media activists who see ourselves as the advanced shock troops of the most significant social movement of the next 20 years. Our aim is to topple existing power structures and force and forge major adjustments to the way we will live in the 21st century. We believe culture jamming will become to our era what civil rights was to the 60s, what feminism was to the 70s, what environmentalism was to the 80s. It will alter the way we live and we think. It will change the way information flows, the way institutions wield power, the way TV stations are run, hooray, the way the food, fashion, and automobile, not to mention sports, music, and culture industries, culture industries, there's a theme in itself, set their agendas. Above all, it will change the way we interact with the mass media and the way in which meaning is produced in our society. That's a, a mouthful and a half, Kala Lassen. Thank you for being here. That's a great preamble to a book which ought to be number one on every bestsellers list. I wish. <laughs> How is it that we have become not only conditioned, but utterly enslaved to a system which forces upon us our goals, our ideals, and virtually every facet of our common, contemporary, socially interactive lifestyle. Yeah. Well, I think the, the really big uh, thing that has changed over the last 20, 30 years is that the, the mass media has become thoroughly commercialized and owned by, uh, by corporations who are pushing a certain kind of an agenda. And if you grow up in this uh, culture of ours today, uh, absorbing... Uh, about 3,000 marketing messages a day and absorbing this kind of uh, pro-consumption uh, uh, lifestyle that is uh, rammed down our throats, then I think, I think to some degree we, we, we become uh, brainwashed and, and we accept the status quo and, and eventually we, uh, we become these kind of voracious consumers that we've become and, and our... Uh, well, you know, you said something interesting. We accept the status quo... I'm not sure if we have much of a choice anymore, but being be that as it may, we not only accept it, but then we, as a group, enforce it, especially our young people. We enforce the status quo. We make it mandatory. And if you step out of line, you're going to be ostracized or worse. Well, I don't know if enforced is the right word. I mean, what happens is that, uh, um, that we live in a consumer society and, and, uh, and somehow... Uh, uh, the consumption values uh, are given to us from the moment we're a little baby crawling around the TV set uh, uh, to the moment we're, uh, you know, teenagers going to high school absor and absorbing uh, 350,000 mm -hmm. marketing messages. Uh, is that is that the figure? Well, the, the, the well-known figure is that uh, by the time a high school student graduates, uh, they have absorbed 350,000 television commercials. That's not counting the, the countless thousands of other kinds of marketing messages. 350,000 television commercials alone. That's not to mention the tens of thousands of murders and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of injuries they've seen. Yes, and this figure of 3,000 marketing messages a day flowing into the average uh, North American brain, that's a fairly well-known figure now as well. And uh, at first sight, it may sound a little, little over the top, but if you actually add up the TV and the radio and the billboards and the logos on our T-shirts and appliances and, and, uh, and all the stuff we, we somehow uh, scan on the Internet and all the signs on our buildings, it does come to, I've done it. I've actually counted it over a 24-hour period and it, it comes to, depending on who you are and how you're living, it comes to between 2,000 and 3,000 marketing messages a day. That is absolutely shocking. I don't think anybody listening uh, who hasn't studied this in detail and in depth would ever even have guessed it was that 
extraordinary. I, eight years ago, uh, Cal, I watched uh, children's TV on Saturday. This is going back 10, 15 years ago, these Saturday morning commercials, yeah. which bombard our, our children. And counted in a 30-second commercial over 56, and one commercial over 56 different scenes in a 30-second commercial. And all of those scenes were visually moving. They were swish pan zooms, reverse zooms, yeah. no static shots, no setup shots, not to mention the incredible amphetamine auditory impulse into these children. And I've told many parents, the first day you abandon your children to commercial television is the day your child begins to be taken away from you and your family. Yes, yes. Well, uh, I think that uh, somewhere in the book I say that it's one of the, the biggest psychological experiments ever carried out on a society where, where you're you know, subjected to that kind of uh, a barrage, not only of, um, as you say, not only of ads, but of uh, gratuitous sex and violence, which, uh, as we know, those two things build audiences and, and, and people don't zap sure. the channels. And, and well, they not only build audiences, but they actually instill behavior in many people. Well, absolutely, they instill behavior. They actually erode your, your empathy. They, they somehow uh, take away your identity and... Uh, uh, and your ability to discern and make value and moral judgments on what you're watching and, and being fed. Yeah, you actually grow up uh, thinking that uh, the world really is the way it's portrayed in movies and, and, and on, uh, right. on TV and on the Internet. And, and real life somehow recedes into the background and this corporatized cool somehow comes to the forefront and, and that's what you think life is all about. So sad, so terribly sad. Uh, this, this is a, a must book, Culture Jam. Culture, remember that, I want you to get this book, all of you, Culture Jam, How to Reverse America's Suicidal Consumer Binge and Why We Must. And the author is K-A-L-L-A, Kala Lassen, L-A-S-N. He is founders, uh, founder of Ad Busters Magazine, which is a, a must magazine. I, I was given this magazine a month ago by a friend and uh, three copies, two copies, and uh, Callie's people sent me some more. This magazine is awesome. You're, you are going to love this, those of you who despise pop culture and, and the common way that we are programmed, or at least they attempt to reprogram all of us to uh, conform to their expectations. Ad Busters Magazine. This is a journal of the mental environment. This is a, a, a critically needed, and uh, boy, am I glad to see this magazine. Uh, Kali, first, let's get to the book and how do people get the book. Where is it available? Well, it's available at most, uh, you know, Borders and Barnes and & Noble and, and the usual bookstores, uh, including many book, small bookstores as well. Sure. People can also go to, uh, to the AdBusters website, adbusters.org, O-R-G, and you can order a book directly from the website if you like. All right. Now, I want you all to remember that, adbusters.org. You've got to make this a regular stop. Check in there. Look at the ads. Watch how the ads are taken apart. Watch how the ads are explained to you, what they're really saying. This is going to be a great help for a lot of you who are just waking up to the fact that commercial television, commercial pop culture is dangerous as hell, especially to young minds who are watching that television. I don't know how many hours a day. You just heard Kali tell us. Oh, 350,000 television ads by the time the average high school student graduates. And you know, folks, we've talked for years, and Kelly, you know this, that television actually puts you in a state of mind. Uh, it's, it's deep alpha, almost theta, yeah. where you cannot any longer make judgment on what's going in. You sit there in a trance, and that 350,000 advertisements go right into your subconscious, programming you to respond to advertising stimulation wherever it may be. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite something. Like, <clears throat> I still can't quite believe that uh, the average television viewing time in, in North America is now roughly four hours a day, which means that, uh, that if, you're, uh, you know, if you're sleeping for eight and you're, you know, you're working for eight and, then, and you're watching for four, then that, that pretty well, that's a quarter of your waking life that you spend sitting uh, passively in front of a box absorbing a certain kind of uh, pro-consumption programming. Yeah, I look at it even beyond the word absorbing. I, I call it uh, its blatant programming of the mind. Uh, I don't think there, Kelly, and correct me if I'm wrong, is any reasonable or even perfunctory regulation 
of this medium at all. They could be unfolding in the visual and the auditory aspects of these commercials any number of different messages. Yeah, and uh, if, um, if this programming on television, if it were programming that was somehow really driven by the people, uh, uh, like it was 30, 40 years ago when television first started, then right. I wouldn't have such a huge problem with it. But we have allowed the television airwaves to be taken away from the people there. I mean, those airwaves legally actually belong to us, the people, and uh, the FCC leases them out to broadcasters and who are then supposed to act in, you know, in, in the, not only in their own commercial interest, but also in the, in the public interest. But anyway, we've allowed these people to, to run away with the ball and to create a situation where now, when, when groups like Greenpeace or, or uh, My Media Foundation, when we go to a, one of the big three networks and we actually want to buy 30 seconds of airtime for, for one of our messages yeah. that somehow speaks back at television, they won't even sell it to us. Oh, amazing. Stand by, Kyle. We'll pause and come right back. It's interesting how you've laid the book out. Uh, four major sections, autumn, winter, spring, and the summer. And the first chapter in autumn is called Mood Disorders. Yes. Uh, most interesting. Tell us more about that. Yes, well, uh, what we've just been talking about, this, this kind of strange uh, commercialized, corporatized mass media that we have, that is actually uh, breeding some, uh, some mood disorders and depressions and, and anxieties. Um, there was a study by... Uh, uh, a professor called Myra Wiseman at Columbia University, and she, one of her major findings was that uh, young people growing up today are 300%, three, they're three times more likely to suffer from a, a depression or, or some sort of a mood disorder than, than older generations. Um, and then there was a second study by uh, the World Health Organization. The results came out last year, and they predicted that if current mood disorders and depressions and anxieties and so on keep on growing at the almost exponential rate that they are, then in 20 years from now, by the year 2020, um, mental disease will be as big as heart disease is today. So, um, well, I think all we have to do, Kala, is look at the sales of Prozac yes. and all the other Prozac family of drugs and understand that what you're saying is already coming to pass. Look at our children. Sure, who are, and, and of who, course many people... They do actually need the Prozac, and Prozac, in some, for some people, for a small number of people, it is actually a, a good drug that, that saves their lives in some sense. But the huge numbers of people who feel low-level anxiety, or, or they feel a little bit down, or, or somehow they feel that their life isn't being totally fulfilled. And how can they not, Kali, when they watch television? Exactly. Well, how can they yeah, not feel television. unfulfilled? It, yeah. it, it is our totally saturated mental environment, a yeah. mental environment that's saturated with... With, uh, with all kinds of uh, mental toxics. Uh, I think that we have a pollution of the mental environment happening today, and we yeah. should take a, a kind of a mental environmental movement seriously now. Pick up any magazine. For, and I'm, when I say television, I'm really being a little vague. I mean all-inclusively the popular culture, okay? Yes. From magazine to television to, to film. Pick up any magazine, look at the images. Pick up the Sunday newspaper, look at the images. It doesn't matter. The imagery is there. The message is there. Be slim, be beautiful, be cool, and be happy, and the world will be the path to your door. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, well, you know, uh, a lot of the mass media and a lot of advertising actually works on a kind of a uh, the principle of First of all, they make you feel uneasy about something, or they make you feel that uh, something isn't quite right with your body or, or, or with your self-esteem or whatever. And then once you feel vulnerable, once you feel that you may not be the coolest guy on the block or whatever, then suddenly they will, they will come up with this solution to the problem, you know, a new car or, a, or, 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 or some, uh, some new fashion or, or wearing some, some Nike sweater or whatever. Uh, so the, the whole, one of the chief principles of advertising is A, create low self-esteem, and then B, sell people the product that will fix that uh, low self-esteem. And so many of us are caught in this kind of a vicious cycle where, where we're continually trying to buy our, our way into, into happiness, and it never quite happens. Buy our way or compromise our way, whatever. Uh, that's the same, of course, technique that our government is using to bring about uh, the extraction of what remains of our freedom and liberty in this country, of course, they'll create an issue, make the public afraid, fear-based, remember that, 
ang- anxious, and then they'll give them a solution for it. It's the same thing. Have you ever seen a car ad, or how, how many millions have you seen? Here's a beautiful woman. Here's a car. All right, the challenge is, what's wrong with you? Why don't you have this beautiful woman? Buy the car get the prize. These these ads are all being covered in adbusters.org and the Adbusters magazine, which is a magnificent magazine. The book Culture Jams what we're talking about now, the first chapter Mood Disorders. I I just love it. Every paragraph I read is almost a jewel. Uh, your kids experience actual physical withdrawal from television. Your 7-year-old can't finish a whole sentence or stay focused on more than Three bites of her Van Camp's beans. She wears a village of the damned expression, remember that? And asks you to repeat almost everything you say. Meanwhile, your 14-year-old finishes his meal in silence and excuses himself to the tent where he scavenges for magazines and, finding none, just conks out. There are no signs of life. The kid's senses have become so deadened from disuse... They can't touch, they can't taste, they can't smell, or they can't see that they are in a marvelous place. To them, it doesn't feel marvelous. It doesn't feel like anything at all. It's a marvelous paragraph, Kelly. Yeah, well, you know that uh, for, for 20,000 generations of human history, we, we, we human beings, we grew up within the natural environment, and all the cues and, and lessons we got you know, came from, from the, the wind and then the rain and the rivers and the trees and whatever. Whatever happened in nature? Uh, well, it got taken over by the electronic environment. And now, um, in, in the last two or three generations of this 20,000 generations, they, for the first time, are growing up in a, in a sort of a, a cultural environment, an electronic environment. And uh, the natural environment has sort of faded into the distance. And I don't think we've quite discovered yet what <laughs> this momentous transition from the natural to the electronic is really doing to us. We haven't it, quite learned yeah. to swim on this uh, electronic beach yet. You are 100% right. Uh, as we go to our break, let me just remind all of you that they are not stupid. They want your children. Because if children grow up knowing nothing other than the electronic milieu, the pop culture milieu, how will you save them? They have nothing to compare it to. Thank God someone has finally done it. Kale Lassen and his people at Adbusters Magazine. That's adbusters.org. And his new book, Culture Jam, How to Reverse America's Suicidal Consumer Binge. I I think that's quite an understatement, but uh, I'll go with it because these people have their hearts and minds way ahead of the curve when it comes to trying to figure out some way some method of taking back a little bit of our individuality from this mass mechanization that you is know, going on. You know that uh, when I went to the, that Battle of Seattle uh, a couple of Novembers ago, then I asked many young people there, you know, why did you come to protest here? What's going on? Why are you here? And many of them actually said that I'm here because, uh, well, they actually used this slightly rude word. They said, I'm here because, because I've been mind-fucked, they said. Uh, they, they have been... You know, propagandized and oh, yeah, well, they and, have. and sure. psychologically abused to the point where, where I just can't take it anymore. I can't take the fact mm-hmm. that half a dozen huge media mega corporations like uh, AOL, Time Warner, and Disney, sure. and, and and three or four others that they now control over half of all the news and entertainment flows around the planet. So, so young people are waking up to the fact that uh, there's something not quite right with our mental environment, and, and they are becoming mental <laughs> environmentalists. Uh, mental environmentalists. So I like that. I can, I can support that until the cows come home. 32 hours a week, folks, on the average for our young people, our adults, watching television, 100, that's almost a full work week watching there. That's called theft of your life on the planet. That's called a, a definite contributing factor to your decline in health. That's 128 hours a month. That's an awful lot of hours per year of watching and being programmed. That's all there is to it. The book, again, is divided into four sections, autumn, winter, spring, summer. Very refreshing way to look at it. We only have an hour with Kyla tonight. Uh, Winter, the second chapter, uh, talks about the cult you're in. We are all in a cult. We don't even know it. We're in a cult. This is a a massive corporate cult. Yes. Well, yeah, that's one good, nice way of looking at it, actually, because if you do... As I said earlier, start crawling around your TV set when you're just a baby and you grow up in this culture, then by the time you 
you know, you're sort of a, not quite an adult, then then you have been. You've been well, somewhat recruited the, into this, this the right. consumer culture of ours. And, and what's the root very, word very of few people can escape from that? What's the root of the word culture? Cult. Yes. 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 <laughs> there it is. We're in a cult. Yes. Yeah, so of course, culture is is a nice word that that uh, I mean, when I was. Uh, a little bit younger, 10, 10 years ago or, or 20 years ago, then I remember that culture was something that we were proud of, you know. We the, right. we, the people, felt that uh, we were singing the songs and, and telling the stories and creating our culture from the bottom up, and, and sometimes the music sounded fantastic, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and the stories we told were really, really, really great stories to tell to each other. But, but now culture is being spoon-fed to us top-down by you know, by the mass media and by advertisers and by corporations. And, and I have a feeling that we have stopped creating our own culture and now culture is being given to us. And, and really, the, the very essence of culture jamming is to start taking that culture back and making it uh, an authentic uh, bottoms-up culture once again. We are no longer creating our own culture. It is being created for us. It is being force-fed to us. And on... Again, various venues that are so subtle, the average person does not have a chance to even understand what's being done to him or her. And you parents, again, I've said it a hundred times, I'll probably say it a thousand more, don't turn your kids over to television. Hold them back. Yes, there are some good things on television. Get them on videos, the good videos, the educational videos, whatever. Keep them off commercial television. Some And parents, oh, Kali, let me ask you this. Do you agree with many people, and I certainly propose this to be fact, that many parents are now afraid of their children, especially teenagers. They don't want the conflict. And beyond that, I think there's an, an awareness on the part of many young people that they have taken power that they wouldn't have dared dream of when we were kids. Yeah, well, I mean, in a lot of families, children have become strangers where they are no longer, you know, they no longer really grew up within the family or within the community in which they live. They grew up at whatever, you know, by watching, uh, by playing uh, games on the PlayStation or, or, or by watching a lot of TV or, right. or, or by going to raves. And it's a totally foreign culture that they live in now if, if they live deeply in, in this uh, electronic culture of ours. And, yeah, and the parents who... Who you know? Who grew up perhaps in a different kind of an environment with different values? They just literally can't relate anymore. Can't, won't, because many of them are out to have their good times, their toys, and kids are viewed uh, in many cases as an impediment to that. And how many parents even stay married anymore? You, you remember back when music, uh, in its last great days of creativity in the 1960s and, and maybe early 70s, when musicians actually—I'm talking about rock music, the Beatles, whatever—they were creating. Uh, there was some creation going on there. Now it's all pu it's all product, product. You know this. It's product. Yeah, it was it was bottoms up. You know the the musical genres they they grew from the grassroots. But That's right. now as soon as something even looks halfway promising, then it's snapped up by one of the the large uh, music Corporations, companies and, yeah. and they turn it into a, a big. Country. But you know earlier on you, you you keep on saying that that you know turn the TV off and don't let your kids watch TV, and I agree of course the way TV currently is. Um, what one shouldn't consume too much of it. But, you know, the real trick isn't so much switching off the TV as taking charge of the TV. How are you going to do that when you're a parent who's sucked into it and addicted course, like your kids? Of course, it's impossible. But what I'm saying is that yeah. as mental environmentalists, as people who, who want to clean up the toxic areas of the mental environment, the, our long-term goal is to, it is to make television accountable to us, the people. Yeah. And, and, for example, we could tell to the FCC, um, from now on, can you please, when you write out those, uh, those licenses to the, the broadcasters, can you reserve two minutes per hour for the people? So for two minutes an hour, you know, the <laughs> people come on and, and have their 15 seconds or 30 seconds or one uh -huh. minute when they can pretty well say what they please and talk back at the sponsors or whatever. Yeah. And bit by bit, you know, we can take control of, of, of this medium again. We shouldn't just uh, say, oh, it's a lousy medium, let the broadcasters have it. Let's One way, agree, agree, Kali. One way that we can take it back is for all of you out there in our school systems, all of you teaching, all of you educators, I, be, I urge you to begin immediately to plug in to your curriculum some of Kala Lassen's work. Take it out of his book, take it from adbusters.org, take it from Adbusters magazine, 
Make a unit for your class on how to look at commercial ads in the media. I don't care print. I don't care electronic. And teach those children what they're seeing and what's being done to them. It's up to you teachers and you parents to try to save your kids. Be right back. In Adbusters magazine, there's, a, there's so many wonderful things, ma- magnificent photography. I don't know where you get the photographers and the artists to do this, but... Uh, well, a lot of the artists who, who do stuff for us, they, they actually send the stuff to us free of charge from all over the world because they, they like this kind of talking well, back at consumer culture. They, they love it. Well, that, that <laughs> bless all of you and keep it up. Uh, you can get to Kale and his people right through the adbusters.org website. Losing the battle of the mind. You talked about depression. We talked about mood to start the program. A recent World Health Organization study revealed that the incidence of schizophrenia has increased 45% in developing nations yes. since 1985. Developing by far the hardest hit have been women. A separate WHO study of 14 countries showed that women have twice the rate of depression as men in Santiago, Chile, the rate was five times as high for women. Chinese women, a previous study found, had nine times the rate of neurosis and depressive neurosis as men, and 75 percent more schizophrenia. What's going on? These are developing nations. They're supposed to be coming into their own. They should be happy. They should be upbeat. Why the depression? Well, actually, in the developing nations, the, the overall rates are, are way lower than than they are uh, in in the first world countries, the so-called uh, G7 countries. In fact, there was another study that you haven't mentioned yet. It was a, a study done by a, a guy called William Vega at uh, Rutgers University. Uh-huh. And it was really fascinating. He, he followed some Mexican immigrants that, uh, that were coming um, to live in, in the United States. Mm-hmm. And he found out that uh, when they first arrived, then their rate of, of, uh, of mental dysfunction was uh, less than half of the general population uh, here in North America. Mm-hmm. And... And then he followed them over a 13-year period, and, and he saw how progressively the, the mental dysfunction started increasing, and, 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 uh, and the drug use went uh, higher, and, and, and uh, the depression started developing, and the mood, mood, anxiety attacks, and so on. And after 13 years of living in uh, the United States, um, they finally caught up, and, uh, and they then had uh, the same kind of a level of mental dysfunction as the general population. So there is something toxic about our culture. We have a toxic culture that actually makes people mentally sick. We are what we eat, and more importantly, we are what we think. And there it is. What goes in, doesn't matter if it's going in through your eyes or ears or through your mouth, it's going to have absolute reverber- reverberations and ramifications inside. There, are, There is uh, so much to talk about. We don't have a lot of time. Ad Busters magazine, there's a neat little article in one of them. Uh, it's called End Games, and you've got the picture of the salmon. This is quite an, uh, an illustrative photograph. The farm-raised salmon as opposed to the natural salmon. The farm-raised salmon could eat the natural salmon easily in one bite. And this is all done, of course, in large part with hormones and other things that we don't want to be eating. But everything's been taken over, Kali. Even our fish in the, in the seas are no longer safe. Nothing is safe on this planet from corporate greed and lust. Yeah, well, things like uh, the debate about genetic engineering where... A lot of the food items in our supermarket shelves today, I mean, they, they have been genetically engineered, but somehow the food companies refuse to uh, or don't want to label it as such. Yeah. So we have this kind of a strange situation that, that, uh, that we are you know, being force-fed something that we may not want to eat, and, and they're not even labeled. And this is the sort of power that corporations have when they control uh, you know, the mental environment, when they control the mass media. They can literally decide our nutritional agenda or our transportation agenda or what have you and and we don't even have the wherewithal to really fight back autumn winter spring summer uh, let's jump to summer real quickly the fourth section of the book rage followed by the second american revolution which we started out talking about this evening this has a chance to reach people who are still mentally active who are still reachable there are many people call it that that don't want to hear this, though. Leave me alone. Get away from me. Are you crazy? Well, sure. I would guess that over half the, the people in the North America and in the United States and Canada and, and the other first world countries, I mean, we have bought into this uh, so-called American dream, and, and we are actually 
you know, we've become consumer drones. We sit there in front of the TV set for four hours every evening, and then on the weekends we we dash off to the malls and do exactly what the TV set has been telling us to do, you know, yeah. we go out and consume. And, yeah. and those people, I think, are lost. They, they, they're bought into something, and, and they will never be able to get out of it. But there, there is a growing movement, especially of young people, who, who really can feel there's a sort of rage building within them, and you can see it in, in places like, uh, you know, like uh, Genoa, where, where, the, yeah. where so many tens of thousands of young people gather to, to protest this kind of a... Yeah. a spread of, of, uh, of our consumer culture here in North America, all over the world. They literally want to stop it. They know that there's something toxic about this, uh, uh, this culture that is right now spreading like an oil slick around the planet. Toxic, spreading like an oil slick uh, by way of processed foods and, of course, television and the mass media, motion pictures, magazines, images, the imagery. It's the images. Once those images go into the mind, you don't take them back out. 350,000 commercials yeah. are and watched the, by the average high school graduate. And the important point is that in a, in a sort of uh, society and culture that we have now, those people who control the images are also the ones who control the culture. And that is, that is why it's so important for, for us to, you know, to take back that image-making power, that culture-creating right. power, take it back from the corporations, because if we don't have that, then we won't be able to control our own future. They will literally give us the sort of future that they think we should have, you know, a genetically inge engineered, unsustainable, foreign yeah. kind of a, you know, commercial culture that, that ultimately will do us in. Look at our heroes now, as compared to what they were. Who are our heroes? Rock stars, basketball players, football players, and we judge them in their heroic stature by how much money they make in many cases. It's Everything's gone... Upside down and backwards, as you said. You know, our young people, by the time they're 18, 19, many of them, if you look in their eyes, they look spent. They look drained. They've been there. They've done it. They've done it all. And many of them are angry, Kali. And, and some of that anger has to stem from the fact that on some level, at some some plateau in their consciousness or subconsciousness, they are aware now that they've been cheated. Somehow they've been cheated, and they're angry about it. Yes, many of them are angry, and actually that kind of a vacant look, I, I see it more these days in, in older people than younger people, actually. I, I have a well, that's that, the Prozac look, probably. I, I, uh, maybe, <laughs> I think there's a real awakening happening right now among young people, and, and all these uh, battles that have happened since the battle in Seattle uh, testify to that. I think that we're at the beginning of a, of a new kind of a activism that, that goes beyond, you know, uh, black liberation and, and feminism and, and, right. the, and the environmental movement. We're into sort of a, a cultural revolution now, and the next few years are going to be mighty interesting. This is true. Uh, the second American Revolution, if it doesn't start now, if it doesn't happen now, friends, it, it's never going to happen. They're, they, excuse me, but I'm going to use that expression, they will have achieved such abject control it will be irreversible. There's nothing we can do. And they are ratcheting down on our freedoms and liberties all the time. We still have a chance. We've got the Internet. Thank goodness for that. Uh, Kala Lassen's book, Culture Jam. I'm going to make sure you remember that. Culture Jam is must-reading. You've got to read this book. Uh, we only have about three minutes left, Kali. What do we want to talk about? I know you've got a million things, but let me just underscore one other thing again. Adbusters magazine. If you subscribe to that and buy his book, you will be doing a tremendous amount to help fuel this revolution. What else can people do individually? Well, I think one of the perhaps the last points I'd like to mention is that we've talked a lot about the, the mental uh, degradation that's happening and the, and the media side of things, but on the ecological side of things, uh, we are living uh, I'm here in, in, uh, in North America, if you add up uh, all the people, all the Canadians and all the Americans, then we come to less than 5% of the people in the world. And yet we are consuming uh, over 25% of all the world's resources. Mm -hmm. And we're also spewing out about roughly one-third of all the world's uh, uh, greenhouse gases and, and toxic waste. So this is the, the other side of the equation, the ecological um, devastation that our way of life, our overconsumptive way of life is, is creating. So if you add up the the ecological damage that we, our culture is doing, and if you add up the, the psychological corrosion that, that, that uh, we are also propagating, then it adds up to those two, the echo and the psycho, add up to a, a pretty devastating indictment of the, the kind of uh, society that we have become. Kala, you were born in uh, Estonia uh, during 
the Second World War. You That's were, correct, yes. You spent your childhood in a, a German displaced person's camp. That's correct, yeah. Uh, when you were seven, your family went to Australia. Yes. You earned your Bachelor of Science uh, in pure and applied mathematics. How did this lead to where you are now? When did, the, when did it all start to come together for you as a person? Well, it all came together. There's many little epiphanies along the way, but it all came together in 1989 here in the Pacific Northwest when, when there was a, some lumber companies here that were airing a, a very false kind of an ad on TV that was telling everybody that, uh, that uh, they were doing a fantastic job managing our forests. Right. And then a few environmentalists, we got together, and we came up with our own 30-second uh, TV spot that tried to tell the other side of the story. And lo and behold, when we went to the same stations that were airing the, the forest industry side of the, the story, they refused to sell us the airtime. And this realization that there is no democracy on the airwaves, mm -hmm. that this most powerful of all social communications mediums of our time, television, that this is not a democracy, that only certain kinds of people are allowed on. And if you have a message that somehow speaks back at the sponsor, yeah. then you're not allowed on. This was a big moment for me when I said, hell, that's it. I'm going to become an activist. And after 30 years of, of really, you know, holding America up to be a big paragon of virtue and, uh -huh. you know, the, the, the country that, that won the Second World War and, and saved us from totalitarianism and so on, that's when I suddenly switched and said, to hell with it. I don't like this culture anymore. Well, a lot of people are saying amen and hear, hear, uh, Kale. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on. I know you're extremely busy. I would like to invite you to come on again at some point in the future whenever you'd like to, and I'm here to help you. Well, it was very nice talking to you. I really enjoyed it. Well, Thanks. thank you. Thanks, Kale. Kale Lassen, that's uh, K-A-L-L-E-L-A-S-N, his book, A Must Acquisition, Culture Jam. How to Reverse America's Suicidal Consumer Binge and Why We Must.